In this video, we're going to learn how to test a component. So a component is fairly new, and we've covered this in the course already. Now, to test a component controller, we can actually use $ComponentController, which is a function provided by Angular Mox. This is actually easier than testing a directives controller, because we don't have to actually instantiate an element or do any DOM manipulation to actually test a component. So this is the actual component that we're going to be working with. We've got a counter, which then increments and decrements a value. So we've also got a fairly basic template, which displays the counter's count, which also has two ng clicks, one for incrementing and one for decrementing the values. These then correspond to the controller functions. So we have this.increment, which is then a function which increments the count. So you can see this.count plus plus, and then we have this.decrement, this.count minus minus. So let's jump over to counter.spec.js and actually start writing a test using dollar component controller. So we'll start with describe again, so we can do describe and then we can pass in counter and then we can just pass in a function. So we're then going to create a few variables so we can do var dollar component controller. And then we also create a second one called controller. Then we'll go ahead and create a before each and actually initialize the application modules like we've done before. So again, we can do before each inject module. We can call the module and pass in app as a string. So then we'll do before each and we'll actually use inject again and then we'll pass in a function. We can then request the dollar injector service. Then inside here, what we actually want to do is do dollar component controller. So we're actually going to override this value again. And what we'll do is do dollar injector dot get and then we'll go and get the component controller. So this will actually give us the service which allows us to test the controller on its own without the actual template. So once we've actually got an instance of this, we can actually create an instance of our component controller. So what we'll do is do controller and then equals. What we actually do here is do dollar component controller. And now the first argument is the actual component name that we want. So our counter component is registered in lowercase with counter. So this is the argument that we need to pass in. So then we'll actually create that object as a second argument. Now we don't actually have any dependencies for this component. We can actually just pass in scope and just assign it an empty object. So the first thing that we want to test is just a sensible one. So we'll actually test if the initial count has zero. So what we can do is do it should have an initial count of zero and then we can just pass in the function. So then we'll write our assertion and what we'll do is do expect and then we can just reference our new controller. So what we can do is do expect controller.count and then what we can use is this to equal again, and we can do to equal zero. So let's jump over to the terminal and give this a try. So this works perfectly. We have an initial count of zero. So let's go ahead and start writing some more tests. So now we're going to write two more tests for the increment method and the decrement method. So we can create another it block and we can do it should increment the counter correctly. Then we can just pass in our function again. And what we can do inside of here is then do controller.increment and then we can just simply call that function. Now we don't have to pass any arguments, so that makes it nice and simple. So what we can then do is do expect controller.count and then we can pass in two equal and then this time we want to pass in one. So that's a pretty simple test. And then what we can do is create a new test. So we can do it and then should decrement the counter correctly. Then we can just pass in our function again we can reference controller, we can do controller dot decrement, and we can just simply call the function. Now, if we go down to the next line, we can write another assertion and we can do expect controller dot count, and then we can do two equal, and then we can do minus one. So you might be thinking, well, if we've just called increment and it's gone up to one, why then when we call decrement, does it then equal minus one? Should it equal zero? So these tests are actually run individually, which is why we use before each. So we create a new instance of the controller each time. So let's jump over to the terminal and actually test out that this is working. So far, these are actually quite simple tests and components have more things to them. We have bindings and we also have lifecycle hooks. So let's jump back to the code and actually extend these tests to cater for the rest of the features that components give us. So the first thing that we want to do is look at this bindings object. Bindings are what you'll typically use all the time when it comes to creating components. Components, you'll generally have things going in and then things going out. So we'll create a property called initial count and then we'll use the one-way data flow syntax. And then what we need to do is actually set up a component lifecycle hook, which we looked at in earlier videos. So lifecycle hooks, as we learned earlier, are when things happen at certain points in our application. 
such as new data coming in or an initialization of a component. So what we could do inside of here is actually create a lifecycle hook. We could do this and then dot dollar on init and then we can just equal a function. So we've actually used these before so they should be familiar by now. Then inside here what we can do is do this dot count equals this dot initial count. So this gives you an example of how to pass data down from a parent component into a child component. So let's jump back to counter.spec.js and we'll make some more changes to actually get this working. So what we'll actually do is create a new variable and we'll actually create an initial count here. So we can say initial count and then equals 200. Now what we need to do is come down to controller and we need to actually explicitly say that we want to create some bindings. So here we've actually set the local dependencies, which is just dollar scope. So we can actually create the local bindings for this particular component so that we can actually test this out as well. So what we can do as a third parameter is actually do a new object and then initial count. And then we can just reference initial count, which is a variable that we just created above with a value of 200. So what we can do is actually create a new test now that makes sure that when the component is initialized through dollar on init, is that it actually has the correct initial count. So we can create a new test and we can do it should initialize to the correct initial count. And what we can do inside of here is do expect and then controller.count. And then we can use to equal again and we can do initial count. So we can actually reference that initial value, which is the variable above. So this won't actually work just yet. So we'll actually go and run the test and then come back and actually fix the test. Our test actually says expected zero to equal 200. So there's something wrong here. What we can actually do is go back to our code and actually fix this. And we'll do these individually so that you actually remember each step. The reason that this is actually failing is because our application isn't actually live. We don't actually have a DOM where our component is being instantiated by a parent component and then passed data, which would then call these lifecycle hooks. So what we can do inside our test is actually call these lifecycle hooks. So above our expect block, what we can actually do is controller, and then we can reference this dollar on init. So we can just call this as a function, and this will actually call the on init method for the controller, which is what AngularJS will do internally. So what we can then do above this is go up, and then we can copy the expect controller.count to equal zero, and then we can simply paste this in above. So before the lifecycle hook has been called, the actual controller.count will equal zero. After on init has been called, we then expect the controller count to actually equal 200, which is this initial count variable that we set up. So we can then go back to the terminal, we can then run comma start, and you'll see that all four of our tests have actually passed. So this gives you an example of how to test the components and their lifecycle hooks. Now we've only demonstrated one lifecycle hook, but it's as easy as it is to test the others.